Welcome back. <laughs> yep, we survived. Um, I think I'd like to start with a moment of silence, thinking about the people who aren't here anymore. I have no idea what we did at our last meeting. <laughs> this is going to be a very short business meeting. Um, future dates. Till the end of the year. Our dinner at Sean Patrick's. Just the last note about that is reservations to Kim by December 3rd, please. Kim's waving. <laughs> Okay. November, we're going to do, assuming we can meet, we'll do a program on quick and easy quilts. We will have stations and three demonstrators. In October, there, uh, as Jackie mentioned, there's not going to be a meeting, but we will do something special instead, and Betty Lerner is going to tell you about that special. No. No. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Right. <laughs> Since we can't meet and we have the YouTube channel set up, the plan is that we're going to do a program solely on YouTube. And the program is on finding inspiration. And this leads into our challenge, which I'll be mailing out to everyone. So there's a, a program on the YouTube channel that introduces it and helps you figure out what to do. And then you'll get the rest of it in the mail. Okay? When is that? When is the program? Uh, October. What? The October meeting night. Oh, and time? Um, well, as soon as I get it done, I'll post it. Okay. <laughs> is it only available? I mean, it'll be available then? Forever. Exactly. So if you can watch it then, that great. If you can't, you watch it when it's Right. The same with the, um, the little short program that we have up now, just for a test. That's going to stay there forever. Right. If you want to watch it three or four times, you can. <laughs> and it's not, um, it's not a private channel. So you can share it with other people if you want. Okay. And in December, because not everybody's going to make it to the dinner, uh, we're going to try and do a little video program for that too, a little short one. And what I would like is for everyone to send me a picture of something you made for the holidays. Could be a uh, an ornament or a tree skirt or and, and the pictures can be you know like from a long time ago with your kids your grandkids or whatever just some interesting pictures okay. and then we'll do something interesting with them and that's that's that so if you know people that are not here tonight it all of this information will be in the newsletter but please share Any questions on programs? Did you all happen to catch the YouTube video? No. Yeah, no. Do you want it? Um, it's easy to find on your computer or whatever device you use. Just punch in YouTube in the search. And when you get there, in the little search box, put in Amherst Quilter Skills. Okay. And when there's a list that'll come up, and when you see the logo and the words, click on that. Okay. Thank you. And that'll be the way in all the time. And that's where your October meeting will be? Yes. Okay. But we'll put it in the newsletter so you can yep. have it written down. Anything for membership, Betty? Um, I just got a new list from Deirdre. 
but I think it's the same. You got one. That's well, no, I asked for it. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad. Uh, Joanne, finance. They're not real wool. Yeah. They're not too woolly if you're insensitive. <laughs> I started this, um, I'm guessing in 2006, when we had seminar, Sharon Craig was here, oh. and she did the North Wind Flop, and I finally got around. This is the top. <laughs> It's 90 by 90. Yeah. Oh, 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 you can go in front. And I think it's just going to have a binding. I don't think it's going to have a border on it. So um, probably multicolor stripped binding. But it's a nice, a nice block to work with, I think. I, you can do a whole lot of different things with it. This is just one possibility. So, and it's all scraps from, from years and years. So. <laughs> This is what I've been working on. <laughs> but the people on the video don't know that. I've just been doing small things. Made these placemats. And I did this. And then I made 40 scrub caps. Don't forget to say your name. Oh, I'm Linda Hunter. Thank you. Um, I, I'm actually teaching hook classes this semester. Um, it's, it's a learning curve because I'm doing both in person for a couple of classes along with Zoom. And then for another couple of classes, it's, it's Zoom only. So, and I, I'm learning Zoom. I'm good at Zoom. <laughs> so, but we did, we did okay. The, the first two classes in Kenton, we actually did okay. So what I'm teaching is a quilt that of course I was going to teach last semester. And I started it in um, February when I was in Florida and expected to get it done very quickly. And uh, this February 2nd, I slipped off a slippery bench and broke my arm at my wrist. So I didn't do it as well as I should have, but I, I got better as time went on. And I just, you know, I had six months to put the binding on. I just did that this afternoon. And put, well, made the binding. Um, so this is sideways. Okay, this is sideways, and, and the, so the binding is the red, and the rest of it, is, it has to be cut off. I haven't done that yet. Oh, but, okay. yeah, that's black, it's black, yeah, black, black um, batting. And Noelle porter Gattel, uh quilted it for me. She did a marvelous job, I think. And so the interesting thing about this quilt is every single block is exactly the same. So when you look at it, really? every block is made exactly the same way. And one of the best ones to look at probably to decide that is this one. Um, if you look at this block, the four corners are snowballs, you see? And then in between the snowballs are two sets of flying geese. Now this particular one has the same for the snowballs for the snowballs on the corners and for the flying geese. But if you look at the one next to it and you say, well, that's not the same one, it is. Because here's your snowball and the snowball has two blue corners and two print corners. And then the flying geese are two sets. So here's a flying goose with the dark blue and the aqua. 
and here's the flying goose with the dark blue and the red. And so every single one of these is made exactly the same way. And I thought this would be a really good one to do now because once people get the hang of it and once they learn how to make uh, flying geese, and I'm going to give them a couple of different methods, then you're just doing it the same way every single time. So it makes it easy to, to, to make this book. And because I had broken my arm, Noel, who was in my class, um, said, well, let me help you. Uh, I'll, I'll help you make the quilt. And I was in Florida, and she was here. And so we went back and forth with testing, and she was showing me all of these fabrics. And I kept saying, oh, I don't know if I like these or not. So she just quit texting me and ended up doing her own thing and did a marvelous job. So this is her quilt. And I wow. love that it's completely different from the one I oh, did. And we didn't know what we were doing. I had no intention of using black, but it ended up needing black. And so her quilt is the same one. And in both cases, you're using four fabrics. It requires a yard, but I always say a yard and a quarter just to have a little extra. And my color one on my quilt was that white print that you hardly see anything of. My color two was red. Her color one is the light aqua, and that's not overpowering. And her color two is the white. And by putting the white sashing along with the white, in the blocks, it looks like background, doesn't it? I mean, I think it really yeah. has a background. Mm -hmm. It looks like, like a background. Yeah. And, and this is just so pretty. I just love it. And I love that they're completely different, but they're the same blocks. And I agonized over putting my blocks together. Oh, this looks like a star, but this doesn't, and this has the center the same as this. So I spent a week trying to figure out how to position it. I said to know well. How did you do this? It looks so good. She said, oh, I just did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting, too, I think, because the things that were started, there's still many other ideas. Me too. Yes. Yeah. Retirement. Retirement, yes. Thank God. Some then of this, I love that book. these are the leftovers of a quote that I made for one of the boys who was in foster care in my class two years ago. So I decided to fit, to use all these leftover blocks, mm -hmm. and um, these are two inch squares that I had. Uh, these are two and a half inch squares that I had, and um, in my box. So I'm trying to use those up, which they just keep multiplying. <laughs> and then this. I just finished this week. I do not like flannel. So what I did, I just don't like piecing it. So what I did was I took all of my leftover flannels, cut them up, and sewed them together. So now I have no flannel left. And well, and this, but this has been together for, for such a long time. But I did have a little bit more left, so I had to make a little bit. <laughs> because I, could, I have probably about this much left of the yellow. And then, well, that's a yeah, so. Oh, yeah. And is the book good for Myron? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically a slideshow that we're making, which will have some voiceover, some music. It's a cooperative project between the Guild and the museum, trying to showcase both of us equally and maybe get new members for both organizations. So in addition to the quilts that came from the quilters, we want to include things that will showcase our different um, subcommittees. So something from the, like the community service and talk about that a little. Maybe that would catch the interest of some people who might want to join. Historic homes, all of our subcommittees. So, so far, the, all the quilts have come in. Jan and I have photographed all of them, just a, a rough photo, so now we can kind of organize into little subgroups. Next week, we're going to start the photography. 
And then whenever that's finished, my sister, who's now retired, but her job was teaching um, IT. So she's going to teach us how to do the slideshow process. And then it's going to be mounted onto the Guild's YouTube channel and onto the museum's YouTube channel. Uh, public, not private. So again, anybody who, can, who is interested or maybe even accidentally, you know how sometimes you're watching something and over there on the side you might want to watch. And we'll see if we either keep connected with the people who aren't able to come and maybe we'll get some new people to join as well. Ooh. Questions? Well, one thing that um, when Jan and I were for pho <coughs> photographing everything, because as we were taking them in, the quilts were folded, and we pretty much would just unfold it enough to see the label and, and make sure everything got registered. Well, when we were photographing them for the first part of the organization, looking at the quilts, we thought we'd have many more traditional kind of quilts. And one of my thoughts when we started this was to get away from that because there are so many people who have kind of that stereotypical idea of what a quilt is like. Grandma's old-fashioned kind of quilt. I would say we don't have a single one of those in all the 54 quilts that were turned in. <laughs> many of them you have seen before at different um, uh, show and tells or, or have been in a uh, quilt show in the past, but we have some new ones. And our, our different art quilters in the guild have, have turned in some beautiful things. Some, we go all the way from like, there's one king size bed quilt, which weighed a ton <laughs> to lift that up, all the way down to little, really artsy wall hanging kind of thing. So I think it'll be really fun to look at even for us who are into quilts and to know about quilts. And you'll be able to, on YouTube, you can zoom in and look at the details and not have to worry about having your gloves on to touch the quilts and all that. So. I'm not sure because I know nothing about putting together a slideshow for YouTube. That's going to be a whole new learning thing. So I don't know exactly what the timeline is, uh, but I'll keep you posted along the way so you know what we're doing. Great, great. Thank okay. you. Great.